This is the most important aspect now. You've done all this hard work of, you know, doing man in the middle, doing CRLs, doing all this OCSP. Now, what do you do with that? Now comes the party, right? You want to feed it to all the tools. Uh, so this is where I'll give you a quick introduction to inline bypass before we get into uh, uh, the S sending that traffic, decrypted traffic to all these tools. Simple solution, look at this arrangement on the left. Let's say you have a route, you have traffic going through a firewall, IPS, WAF, advanced threat detection, and core switch. Let's say this was running at one gig, this at five, this at 10, and that at 10. What's the speed of the network? Slowest point. Slowest point, <laughs> one gig. So that was the whole the genesis. Is there a way you can take traffic, send web traffic to a web tool, email to another tool, then send the rest of the traffic, load balance it across, collect it all back, and just provide efficiencies off scale. And that was the whole idea of inline bypass. Big selling, because still for a long time, uh, Gigamon was, you know, take a copy of the traffic and feed it to tools. And with this, we became inline. So we were actually, all these tools take action on the product, and if they drop it, then the traffic actually gets dropped. So the key, idea, the key advantages of this were obviously make tools more efficient. Second, security tools love it because all of a sudden, if they want to prove their efficacy, simply connect to Gigamon, get a full out-of-band flow, and then if they prove their worth, they're actually seeing stuff, then the administrator can simply promote them in line right. just with a uh, <laughs> configuration. But first, they have to prove their worth. And uh, unfortunately, very often, they don't, they're not able to prove their worth because they don't get access to the traffic. With this thing, they were able to do that. And of course, uh, you have a whole slew of things. So let's, but let's now take this into the uh, realm of SSL decryption. So we'll start with the most simple use case. Here's a security tool, router and switch connected to it. What happens when Gigamon comes into play? You have a Gigamon, flows through that tool, and comes back in. Right? So far, it's very clear. So there are two aspects to this. One. We have physical bypass, which means if the gigamon goes down, then the relays close and traffic flows through. Obviously, no traffic flows through the tool. And this is just the simplest use case of one security tool. And the second aspect is logical bypass, which means let's say the security tool goes down. Then we just bypass and send that traffic on. Gigamon is still active, and then it goes through that tool. And if let's say there are five other tools in the place, only that will be taken out of the arrangement and the rest will continue to see traffic. So these are the resiliency aspects which we provide. How do we do that? We send heartbeats, et cetera, and constantly monitor the health of all these tools. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So let's say you had SSL traffic going through three IPSs. Normally today they would not be able to see any of that traffic. With a Gigamon in place, well, you could go in, we could decrypt it, and load balance that across all the three IPSs. And we do that, by the way, today with unencrypted traffic. That's been going on for the last two, three years. We've just moved that now to encrypted traffic too. Encrypted traffic, decrypt it, and then we can load balance it across all these three tools. We have a whole slew of load balancing options, round robin, you know, equal 30, 30, 30%, all of that. Now, the third use case is, Let's say you have traffic first going through, and this is a classic use case, right? You have traffic, you'll first send it through a firewall, then an IPS, and then a web uh, security tool, cascading, cascading arrangements. How do you, even those are provided via Gigabond. So traffic goes, goes first through that first tool, the IPS, and then through the DLP in this example, and goes back in. So we'll decrypt it, send it through the first. If that says it's okay, then we send it through the second. If that says it's OK, then we re-encrypt it and send it back to the fabric. And if this tool, for some reason, went down, traffic would still end up going through the first tool. So these so are some resilience here. In this scenario, it's going from data source to Gigamon, the hands off to one thing, then it sends that data back to Gigamon, or just yes. sends a verification? Send back to so, so it's not, so if I send a gig up in one direction, I have to then receive a gig down in order for me to send another gig down to somewhere else to receive a gig down and then transmit a gig down. Does that yes. seem technically That's true? Right. They're all ports, exactly. That's how it goes. In, in, out, in, out, okay. and they're all in line speed. So it's not like each part is doing a handoff because, like uh, you, were, you were saying before, is sometimes people like to change packets. 
you know, sometimes the products like to, hey, uh, yeah, we changed the, the way that header looked on this page. Mm -hmm. Then we receive that header change version and we hand it off to the next one to where the end state gets those modifications. Yes. Okay. That could also happen. Yes. If let's say they started, you know, modifying the payload, or let they saw a malicious attachment and they removed it. Sometimes security tools will remove that attachment. So they're, they're playing a game of telephone. So every modification makes it to the end recipient. Makes it to the end because once we get that final packet, we re-encrypt it and send it out. So, gotcha. Okay. So the end. Yeah. Exactly. Well, web Half a firewall. millisecond. <laughs> web app firewall is notorious for that. Yes, this, but in that case, it's you're going up into just one box. Yeah. Right. And doing it all in one box. So yeah. that way you just say, okay, I've decrypted yeah. all of you. Do whatever you want to the packets. Finally, I get it. Re-encrypted. And, and as we're handing off from tool to tool to tool, if every tool makes one little change in the line, we then inherit those. It's not like, oh, you made those changes. Yeah, we discarded that. You know, because you met the criteria of approved, effectively. And Versus uh, the old way where each tool decrypts it, makes the change, re-encrypts, sends yep, it out. Yep. Yeah, which that's is, painful is, and slow, and, and but true. That's what we've been doing. That's what we've time. been doing. And yes. not, not to open a complete can of worms here, but I am noticing with GigaView, you know, yesterday we, we spent some time with VMware, and we spent a lot of time going over the NSX platform. And so there is, I'm reading on your website that there is support in there for VMware NSX as a dynamic service insertion. So you can deploy this across an NSX environment. Is that a fair statement? Uh, that yes. would. Uh, <laughs> not trying to open a can of worms. Yes. <laughs> I heard somebody say yes. Worms open. No, yes. the answer is actually the answer is no. <laughs> so, oh, that's a different why. answer. Well, <laughs> that's yeah. not the same as yes. <laughs> it's not the same as yes. It's a no, and the reason is because you can make it short. I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to spell out yeah, unless you want to. But this is mainly for physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, in the case of NSX, some of the things would change. We do have an integration with NSX, which is mainly for out of band, not mm -hmm. for inline. Okay. Um, so the SSL decryption that is being spoken about today, um, we can do out-of-band SSL decryption in the context of um, VMware NSX. However, if it is full-blown man-in-the-middle functionality, that's not in the context of VMware NSX. Is, ah, okay. is there a virtual appliance version of this software to do its so, voodoo? Or is it intended to be hardware ASIC where you've got accelerated ASICs for decryption, stuff like that? You yeah. 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 Question. It is a heavy I duty one, yeah. so yeah, we need it purpose. It. The, it has yeah. to do all the work. Yeah, so I, this is this will be so not beyond NSX. When I think about hybrid cloud, when I have yeah. workloads in AWS, Azure, I don't have a solution today for this problem. That's a that's a fair conclusion. That's correct. But and that's but, still it's still a problem that is actually an industry issue mm -hmm. that is currently a work in progress. And the reason is because a lot of the public clouds they don't really have the necessary crypto accelerators to actually do this at, at high performance. Oh yeah, the speed would you, If you try <laughs> doing this on a generic Intel x86 processor, by the mm -hmm. way, performance tanks. Mm -hmm. so you need as, to have those accelerators to do this at scale. and stuff like that improve in the cloud, there may be hope, but right now we just don't have the- That's correct, it's still a work in yeah. progress. That's correct. But, then it could, but I'm, I'm assuming it could be fair with NSX that if this was, say you end up doing the man in the middle product and it's out of band, mm -hmm. then that's, Still a pretty good solution, better than what's there because it could it could throw those triggers back to shut the port totally. down, shut the service load down. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, and I totally learned something. It's, and it's, <laughs> it's past this the is delay, awesome, <laughs> but it, it, it's 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 kind of a best effort system at that point. Yeah, it well, better than nothing. In, system in private also. cloud, unless you're running uh, like a virtual NSX router to route between segments, you're going to be transitioning your entire stack to to flow between those segments anyway. Anyway, yeah. So you're going to be hitting your core. And and you should be tapping your core, you know everything and anything and everything that goes through your core anyway. Well, you be using Gigamon's data visibility stuff for that anyway. Exactly. So. Exactly. It's just that this is solving one specific use case for SSL TLS traffic. Yeah. You know, you're not using it for all of your traffic that passes through. You know, SIP traffic, uh, not so much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the last use case, which is really interesting, is let's say you had three branches: a branch, a HQ, and a remote office. Mm. And all these three had small size security tools. You know how those remote security tools are. And they barely do the basic security functions. Decryption, forget it. Nobody's turning that on. So one option could be that, let's say this is the diagram. You have three different networks going through three different tools. One option could be that you could actually connect it all to a Gigamon, decrypt it, and we VLAN tag it saying, oh, this is coming from the branch. This is coming from the HQ. This is coming from the remote. So we internally know where these networks are, 
you can send it through, we decrypt it, send it through a common tool, and then come back. And where do we store that? Is it is that three boxes? Is that one box? Is it stuck you in could HQ? Just submerge it, you could submerge it to one box. And that's, and these I've got a branch, you know, I've, I've got one in, in, in Paris, I've got one in New York, and my headquarters in Santa Clara, and I'm like, I'm gonna put my box in Santa Clara. Yeah, <laughs> then right? you'll have to backhaul all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, then it's a little more You tricky. can. You but can. You, you but can. there you go. That, At the, you got to backhaul all that. You're, you're tromboning your internet. Oh, don't even. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> that option is there with Gigamon. But this would be more like you have multiple networks. You want to submerge it in a thing. Sure. It would be very easy to do this this way. You can reduce the number of, uh, you know, you can have one single. The whole idea is this is already supported today with unencrypted traffic. We have just mm -hmm. moved it. You know, our whole inline bypass has been highly appreciated because, you know, we just said, so the whole idea is we move this to a uh, security tool. It becomes more now. advantageous in a hub and spoke environment than it would necessarily be a disparate mesh that's with right. multiple egress points. Yes, that would be the thing. That, that's absolutely right. So I'll briefly go into the life of the packet, and then we will move over to the actual demo of inline and out of band tools. So simple. SSL is going on typically the way an SSL would happen is you'd have a SYN, SYNAC, ACK, and then the client would say client hello. It would actually, basically it's the hello. Basically it says, I'm the client, I want to start SSL, and these are all the parameters. I, these are the cipher strengths, this is the encryption algorithm, this is all I'm using. So that's the client hello is what we look for, and that will signify the start of a SSL connection. Otherwise, it's no different from a TCP packet. Mm -hmm. So. This is how it actually goes, and you all had asked how this whole encryption happens. Well, let's say traffic goes into the network. You can set flow mapping and say all UDP traffic, all ICMP traffic, stuff which has nothing to do with SSL. Mm -hmm. You could just say bypass that, you know, bypass it from the decryption thing. Just send it over straight back into Are the Are we network. bypassing from a protocol perspective or from a port perspective? Because, you know, 8443 is Both. still SSL at that point. Both. Yeah. We can do pro protocol as well. So, it, for example, if you don't want to send UDP mm -hmm. through the GigaSmart engine, you can completely bypass it because we don't expect uh, to see TLS as. But a, if uh, if we had traffic that we don't necessarily know about that's being passed across the network, you mean like application traffic like that's at SSL at that point? Can we detect that and then try and act against it? Are you saying that you want to just say bypass Skype traffic that kind of application level? In that for that case, bypass. But if I want to implicitly or explicitly inspect traffic that's not 443 in, in order to ensure if this is in fact SSL. Like, I mean, truly, I'll do a good command and control thing, I'll throw it on an arbitrary... That, that, that would be the normal configuration. That would be the normal configuration. So normally you would put UDP, ICMP in there, because there's no TCP, SSL mm -hmm. needs TCP. But then all TCP flows, for example, you can send now to the Gigasmart. So okay. it'll be looking. So it has nothing to do with port 443, though that option is there. Mm -hmm. If you're very sure that all, uh, SSL is only running port 443, then you can say the rest of the ports don't send to Gigasmart. But if you're not, you send all TCP flows to that Gigasmart, and it'll check. Oh, am I saying start TLS? No. Then it's plain TCP. I just send it out. Mm -hmm. But if it is uh, start TLS, then it's SSL then I decrypt that traffic, feed it to the inline tool, shown by the green arrows, and then if the, uh, if the inline tool says this is clean, then I re-encrypt it and send it over. Mm -hmm. And by the way, since I'm decrypting it, I can just make a copy of it and also feed it to an out-of-band tool, simple. And those were, uh, those, we'll be showing all of that in a demo. What about DTLS? Sorry? What about DTLS? Mm. Okay, which is, uh, a little for, I mean, could you elaborate on that? So DTLS is where you take TLS traffic and you put it in UDP, mm -hmm. right? So for real time, like voice applications, right? You, right. Don't want, you don't want to resend, you know. I don't think we support that. Yeah, we're, right we're not supporting that right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. But that's, that's a great roadmap mm -hmm. item. Thank you for that. Absolutely. So, so this is the example, and now we'll go ahead with a demo which will illustrate all these concepts. So basically, you have to implement some kind of policy-based routing to forward all your TLS traffic to the Gigamon appliance. Mm -hmm. Is that the first assumption? Well, that gets into the, you're going to tell us exactly how you implement this in line, possibly maybe through you know, con configuration and URL pushing and proxying and stuff along those lines. Exactly. So all TCP would go in over there. And then it would determine if this start TLS or not start TLS. If there's no start TLS, oh. sorry, sorry, if there is no client hello or client hello, 
no client hello, then it is plain. Yeah. So mm -hmm. send it out. Yeah. If it is client hello, then check my URL categorization. Gotcha. Is it Wells Fargo? Is it uh, is it thing? If those are the cases, then send it out. Mm -hmm. But so if it is not Wells Fargo, not uh, Citibank, then uh, decrypt it and send it through the inline tool. So you're guessing everything? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a brief uh, walkthrough of the UI. I'm going to show I have multiple inline tools connected and I have uh, one out of band tool connected as well. I'm going to show the flexibility of changing the traffic direction through the inline tools. For example, if you want the traffic to flow through the first tool uh, and the second tool, the reverse traffic can be you know, through the second tool and then to the first tool or the other way around. For the demo itself, uh, I have two inline tools. Uh, number one is the Cisco Firepower Next Generation IPS, and uh, the other one is a Palo Alto PA200 firewall. I do have an out-of-band tool, which is the RSA uh, NetWitness tool. Uh, all three of these would actually see decrypted traffic being fed to them uh, from the uh, HC2 box or the visibility platform. Number three, I'm going to download a test file from icar.org. Now, icar is uh, the European expert group for IT security. They host non-malicious test files uh, for users to download to do a basic check on the antivirus and vulnerability capabilities. So I'm going to download that through the network and see, uh, see that uh, the firewall is able to block it, even though it is over HTTPS. Last but not the least, I'm going to upload some confidential information, credit card information through Dropbox uh, to my own account and see it, uh, on, see it show up on the NetFitness tool. Actually, we had a question coming over Twitter that I want to I address. Um, how does this whole solution deal with uh, like OS, uh, OCSP uh, stapling for, for certificates? So when you, you have to have that same cert? We support OCSP stapling. We do support yes. OCSP stapling today. Okay, so, so you, that, that's a bypass function? No, basically what happens is OCSP stapling means you don't check the OCSP uh, server. Yeah. You tell the server itself, you go to the OCSP uh, you know, thing, get the response, staple it to your certificate, and send it to us so we can check that. Okay. So it's just a show. So what about on the client side? Usually client, or client don't need, doesn't need to authenticate. It's only will be the server which would okay. need to authenticate. So these are the two inline tools I have uh, connected on the platform. I have defined them uh, as inline tools, uh, named them as Cisco IPS and Palo Alto Firewall. To show you the arrangement of these, it's a fairly flexible way of defining how traffic flows through them. So right now, the traffic will first flow to the firewall and then to, to the IPS. But we have an option of uh, changing the reverse direction if you want the traffic to first go through uh, the IPS and then through the firewall. Mm. If you didn't do that, it would go back through the Palo Alto and then through the IPS yes, exactly. again? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to navigate to ICAR, which is uh, hosting the non-malicious uh, anti-malware test file. I'm going to do a download over here. Make sure I, I download it over HTTPS. You can see the file download uh, happened instantaneously, even though it was over an encrypted HTTPS connection, right? Because right now the tools in the corporate network they are not doing, they are not able to look at uh, encrypted traffic. So I'm going to do the same uh, on the on the test PC which is uh, behind the HC2 or the visibility platform. Here, I go to ICAR, I, I select the same option. Basically, try to download the encrypted file. You see, the connect, it, it could not be downloaded because the firewall actually sensed that uh, this is a malicious file, it uh, did the whole entire virus and anti-vulnerability checks, and that's why it was able to block it. Hmm. Then you get a help desk call. Yeah, so, th <laughs> so actually that's a good point, right? So then you get a help desk call. But that's can not we, their fault. I know, I get that, yeah. I, clear. Is there any way we can 
I'm trying to think, is there any way we can redirect them to a it, page that gives information? That would be a lot of by the third party yeah. products so, doing so, it. Or so how like is that, that logged so thing. we can go in and see what happened? Yeah, so this, yeah. if you see the log, it happened right around you know, 936. The ICAR test file was uh, detected on the tool itself. And then it set both an alert and a reset uh, in the directions. Mm -hmm. yeah, the and that page thing would really actually depend on the tool. We have mm -hmm. uh, Imperva you know, uh, as a tool that sends a uh, kind of a page for the end user to show warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've got it. You've so got if the page that, actually created that tool and sent it to the end user, we would actually just echo that and send it out. Oh, okay. So we will preserve the behavior. Yeah, that's, what that's important because a, a lot of tools just do that. The reset and then you have oh, yeah. why. And I've, I've done the where we present the, the, the warning page that this tried to happen so that way they can contact and say, hey, it was stopped, but at least yeah. there's a there's a chain there. Yeah, just, just dumping it just causes so many problems. Yeah. Yeah. So again, for the out of band tool, if I try to upload a file uh, that contains uh, credit card information, uh, let me navigate to the uh, test client. Are we in DLP in here? Really? Yes, we're showing DLP now in action. Yes. So this is uh, my test client. I'm going to upload a file, um, basically that contains credit card information. Once I upload it, even though the connection to Dropbox is encrypted, because I'm doing a man in the middle, the out of band net witness tool would be able to see what kind of stuff is being uploaded or downloaded. And uh, we do have uh, protection enabled on the net witness to, to sense what kind of traffic is being sent in uh, both directions. Mm -hmm. That would be the RSA net witness. It will actually see that decrypted traffic and detect uh, credit cards. How well does that work with archives, and how deep can you go? Ooh, nice. I think we'll I take that. Of, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll save the zip files, but it, I mean, it's completely encrypted. It's not really encrypted. So I go back to the net witness. Uh, this is kind of the. Uh, dashboard. Uh, you can see the very first enablers of compromise is a possible um, credit card. So I can uh, dig deeper into it. I can just, uh, with one click, uh, try to take a look at uh, what is uh, happening with this and view the actual file that was sent over an <coughs> encrypted uh, connection. Just further to my other question, what about encrypted archives? Wouldn't that technically be the job of the net witness or? Whatever that tool that. was. Yeah, because yeah. the because the Gigamon pulls apart the SSL connection and passes the binary data to NetWitness. Yeah. So if it is five times zipped, for example, five or ten times zipped. And encrypted. A and encrypted, we would if it is the original encryption, we will peel off and then take that and feed it to NetWitness. And then it is protected. I, I'm having the same thing in my head. I keep having to remind myself it's a visibility tool that passes it off to those yeah. guys and yeah. realizing where the visibility is. The other tools that would need to do that. Other yeah, we yeah. peel off yeah. the outer SSL layer. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you saw the alert on the NetWitness tool. It actually shows the file that was uploaded and it contains fake. Um, credit card data as well as social security numbers. Yeah, I hope they're fake on the, for the stream, yeah, exactly. otherwise. <laughs> Hang on one second, I'll tell you. <laughs> Amazon just got an order. I need a new screen protector, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is how we enable the tools to, uh, you know, see all the decrypted traffic and do, you know, what they're purpose built to do, right? Block malware, block, uh, act as an antivirus, well, anti-vulnerability. Uh, so this is where the the whole solution comes in and enables uh, kind of our tools, both inline and out of band, to do their job. I think that pretty much sums yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have an ease of? I mean, I understand group policy, blah blah blah, right? But do you have an ease of for the end recipients of the first step of how you can import these certificates into group policy, versus let me go Google how I can get this thing into group policy and deploy this the certificate out to all my end users. We have it in our deployment guide, but uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can work on. Right, it even like a specialized you know web page recipe because let's just say I get a lot of hits on blog posts because I wrote something that yep. should be part of the common basis that no one did, and it's like come visit here to do the thing that you're supposed to know how to do. I wrote a post on the, on the same thing, but Good what feedback. I would recommend yeah. you guys do is where you have your certificate thing, 
It's very easy for you guys to write some code, integrate it with Active Directory, to send the request, get the response, and install Directly it. Directly put it on the thing, yep. Make it easy for the Microsoft administrators out there the just, block through just GPO do it. thing done. Yeah, because uh, they type in their, their admin username, you guys send the, the request and get the response. Because we see more hits on, I see more hits on my blog entries about how to do certificate stuff than anything else. So that would really nice. help your uh, mm -hmm. Okay, um, your we'll do, absolutely, great. We, we want the product to work. We don't want to have it be the most painful experience in the world just to m enable it to do right. its job. Uh, as network engineers, it's not something we dive into regularly, unless you're in the security side of well, things. Well, certificates are right. complicated even for people to get it. Yeah. It's the real work from DevOps. Remember, 1,500 developers, four ops guys doing all the work. Yeah.